still OSBA champs. Crestwood Prep, perfect in OSBA play in 2023 and 2024. Well, it's going to be a different looking team next year. It's going to be led by Agat McKeer, who left her fingerprints all over this game, but say goodbye to four of Crestwood Prep's biggest competitors in the final match. 94 57. That's an exclamation mark victory in the championship game. in some of those spaces, all right? Um, she's playing pretty well for them. I think against Lincoln, she made a bunch of threes, so I, I can expect her to be a bit three happy this game. So again, close out, forcing her to finish at the rim. She is a good slasher, right? So that backdoor cut from the baseline that we're talking about, when they run flip, sometimes she'll look to get that and or just naturally off of just regular play action, she'll try to just get some backdoor cuts. So we can't let that happen. My basketball journey is actually pretty cool. I think I was very fortunate to have really good coaches young. I migrated from Jamaica in the 90s. Um, so I went to CR Marchant Middle School and my first coach uh, was Paul Jones, who's the courtside um, commentator for the Raptors. So I was fortunate to have him in my corner early. Um, and then I went to Renemede, which is a powerhouse like back in the day. And then I transferred to Father Henry Carr my last two years and played for the legend uh, Paul Melnick, where you know, he, he really made sure that we respected the game and competed every day. And that was one of the things that I carried with me to, to the state. So when I went to junior college, I went to Lake Region State, um, where I did pretty well uh, my sophomore year. I was second team All-American. I led the nation assists, all that good stuff. And then I ended up going to UNC Wilmington in North Carolina to finish out my college career as a Division One athlete, which, you know, at the time, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And I still think it was the greatest thing in the world. But when I got there, I realized there's such a big gap between, you know, what we were doing here in high school, trying to get ready for that. And just when I got there, I realized things that I was I thought I was good at. I wasn't as good at or things that I was good at. I needed to be better at and so on and so forth. So that also taught me just a little bit about recruiting from a player standpoint of understanding style of play, different fits, coaching styles, personnel at conferences, etc. So for me there, I didn't play a lot. Once I graduated, one of my assistant coaches, um, who was pretty fond of me as a player when I was there, Joe Redman, he got a job as a Division II head coach. And he, he called me one day when I was in Canada and was just like, hey, man, I know things didn't work out how you wanted it to in Carolina, but, you know, I respected the, your work ethic. You showed up every day, whether you played or not, you gave it everything you got. And, you know, I would love to have you on my staff. So I was, got the opportunity to get my master's and, and be a graduate assistant at East Central University in Oklahoma where, you know, I learned a lot about coaching um, because that was where I was on the bench now as a coach and making decisions and doing different things. So that kind of prepped me for coaching. But while I was there, it actually, that's when I actually fell in love with wanting to be a teacher. So up here is like distinctions, like 90 average and over, and then 80 and over. So they're, they're all on there. That's what, that's Toby, uh, where are we at? Taylor, oh, Chantel, uh, where's the grade 11s? Ava's up there, Ava's 90 plus. Liv, Liv's crazy, Liv's like 98 hour, just something crazy like that. But even the young bucks, like the grade nines, like Avery's distinction as well. Um, Kendall, Shay, like they're, they're all on there. So very, very lucky. KK's on there, uh, Brooke. So it's, it's good. I never have to worry about that stuff. So it's a win for me. When I moved back to Toronto, um, Falstaff Community Center, it was like the hub of, of basketball. That's our Rucker Park, our, our Dykeman, et cetera, et cetera. So we were always kind of there just hanging out. It'd be basketball legends from all over. Like it'd be Denim Brown walking through the door, Shane Morrison, Antwi, you know what I mean? Whoever. So the basketball culture and conversation was always rich. And there was always this little girl that was just there always playing and wanted to play everybody one-on-one -on -one and was just fearless and so on and so forth. And that was Cheyenne. Patrick was like, her father figure and mentor at the time and she was playing I think with Yace boys so he wanted to create a team for her to play and just start to play against girls at first I was like I don't want to coach I'll just come I'll help out and myself and Nia Daly and a few others we were coaching at the time and just helping out 
And it went from just practicing one day a week to, you know, the kids falling in love with it. In the midst of that, cultural um, grassroots team practice at Falstaff. And one of the parents of a student there, or an athlete on his team, attended Crestwood. So that father, Ronnie Allschuler, kind of connected the dots between Crestwood and us. And he basically talked about wanting to enrich the sports and the basketball program at Crestwood. So they came, met Cheyenne, met Patrick, etc., and wanted to bring her to Crestwood to start a program basically around her. But I mean, her on a team with other students that don't really play basketball wouldn't really equate to wins and her getting better. So eventually it was like, all right, well, her teammates and a few of them and her sisters and then will come with her. But then it was like, all right, well, who's going to coach them? And then it was like, well, their rep coach is also a teacher. So then that's kind of how I came in the equation. And then it was like, well, if we're going to do a girls program, why not do a boys program? And, and then that's kind of how the both the boys and the pro, boys and girls program started together. He's tough in a good way. Like he's always trying to push you to be the best version of yourself. He tries to get you out of your comfort zone, you know, but if you're down, if you're having a bad day, a bad game, a bad practice, like he'll still try to uplift you. Also, I'll, I'll try to make you the best player you can possibly be. I think he's just such an encouraging person. Like he just looks out for the best in everyone. Like he just wants his players to do the best that they can. So he's gonna give them, you know, he really fights for us. Like as players, he wants to get us in the best tournaments. Like he wants to, you know, even if he doesn't know if we're gonna win or lose, like he just always has the confidence in our team to, you know, be, I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but like even like when we weren't as good as we are now, he still had all the faith in the world in us and would like enter us into like the biggest competitions like in the States and just different things like that. So he was kind of like manifesting for the future where now we are that team and we can compete with, you know, the highest level. So he kind of just like manifested that into reality, if that makes sense. He lets you really play through your mistakes, which like helps you like gain confidence and he believes in you a lot. So it just makes you want to believe in yourself too. Coach Marlowe, oh my God, there's too many words. He's like, he's so cool off the court. Like said, he's just like here for us, no matter what off the court. And in basketball, he's just pushing us through everything. It's so cool how like much I've grown under his coaching in such a short time, but he's just helped me and everyone else that I've been with expand the game so much. Early start, good start. Everything, everything got to matter. Every possession, every rebound, every screen, every deflection, every box out, every run, everything got to matter. Right? Everything got to matter. Ball, 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 ball. Pass, pass, white. Get up. Who are the fouls on? Keep track of them. Who are the fouls on? Keep the lead, Ava. You got to keep the lead. Keep the lead. When it comes to coaching here and playing kind of like Robin to his Batman, Marlo will step to the beat of his own drum almost to a point where, and he admits that he could become more emotional at times. And as an assistant, I feel like a big part of my role is sort of being the buffer in between when emotions are really high and when the bench is really low. Aside from like the tactical stuff where I'll just recommend like, hey, this is what I'm seeing, or like maybe we think about going to this or going to that person. I think where, where people kind of misinterpret what an assistant is supposed to be. You can't be on the same, like, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, and be on the same emotional level as the head coach, at least from my perspective. Because if that is the case, then my job as a, an assistant, I forget about all the girls down the line. Or, he has to think about the game more strategically, is getting on the players about the little like details. I find that I'm like, okay, I have to kind of do a little bit of both. Like I'm like a general manager in a way, where I'm like, 
have to make sure that he's cool, level-headed, coming back down to earth. I have to also recommend stuff. And then I also have to talk to the girls and be like, hey, what are you thinking? So now I'm in my player's coach mind of, why didn't you shoot that shot? I don't know, I just, no, but we trust you to shoot that shot. I feel like Coach April, you know, she's great as well. She's like a great moderator. Like she's a good balance with Coach Marlo because sometimes, you know, he's a little hard. She can, you know, tone him down a little bit. So you're getting both, like, best of both worlds. In a sense, you know, she can be hard as well, but she also understands, you know, sometimes that people need something different. So she knows how to, like, control that and everything, which is great. And then Coach is a great help as well. She's our strength coach. So she's getting us right in the weight room and all of that, you know, making sure we're ready for games and making sure we're eating right and everything like that. So that's great as well. She's just in so many different spaces that for these young girls, she's able to have different conversations that myself, I can't have, but then it's also her basketball journey. She went out East and played and so on and so forth. So I would say she now brings that 2024 mindset, but also played the game from a point guard's perspective of a 90s point guard. So she can really help, especially our point guards at a younger age with our junior program, start to see the game through a point guard and a coach's lens. So by the time they get to be at the senior prep level, that their mind is moving at a level that'll help them to be successful and acclimate as soon as possible. Composure, that's it. When we don't turn it over, we score. But they're playing harder than us and beating us every 50-50 ball, every scrappy rebound, they're going to get it. We need more scrappy plays from all of us. How many other jump balls have we got? How many deflections? How many loose balls? How many dives? Maybe one, two, a couple here and there, but not enough. So we got to create more opportunities and take advantage of more opportunities. Does that make sense? We're good. All right, 20 minutes out of our system. Let's go be great. All right? Crush ball three, family on six. One, two, three. Press Press one. Four, five, you six. guys are the same. Live is middle, Tyann's back. Tyann, if it's coming at you, it's going to go right. I would definitely say my coaching style would be confidence. I think, especially in girls' sports, confidence is something that, that we have to really push into these young girls, not just on the court, but off the court. Um, so for me, it's really confidence, defending, confidence, scoring, uh, rebounding, whatever, whatever that may be. I think if you are confident in the work that you put in behind the scenes, then it'll allow you to be confident to do those things in front of a million people. So it's really just work and, and confidence in the work that you're putting in. The individual success of our program has always been attributed back to the success of the program. So when kids come here, it's really about the buy-in. So once you, you commit to the program, the program will commit to you. So like, I'm fortunate, I think I, we won three championships now. Uh, I think I was coach of the year twice, but we've had Aliyah was, was MVP, defensive player of the year. Um, Cheyenne, Tasha, they were all OSBA. Rebecca, I think Toby's gotten a few of them as well. So this school is probably the most supportive school I would say in, in high school sports, second to probably some of the bigger programs in America. But well, the kids that are here now, they were young enough, but old enough to see some of the older kids that were here before them and the work that they put in to, to get to where they're at. So now the conversations for me become a little bit easier in terms of the consistency that it takes, the commitment that it takes, the work that it takes, and so on and so forth. The school and the administration is just flat out amazing here. Um, so that helps tremendously. You know, it's not a situation where you're pulling teeth to try to get things or resources uh, for the kids. So with them being so forthcoming and wanting to see the kids do so well, that, that helps everything else. You no, know, you're coming to Crestwood and if you're coming here, you should understand, okay, there's a standard of school first. You have to maintain that. And then coming in, we're, we're, your transition to basketball, and we have to maintain that same standard, right? It starts with that. If this is what you want to do, this is what it is. Right, just tra full transparency. We're selling you coming in here, working on and off the court. And our development is coming in, having these young guys in U14 watching film, 
right? We're starting from them, right? Like you, you gotta understand what that's about, okay? You know the gym's open, are you gonna be here? Are you gonna be getting better, okay? We're not, you know, time waits for nobody. We're letting you know this from, from the beginning because if you're coming at the ninth grade and you wanna go on that junior team, it's a standard there, right? It's not a given. This has probably been my, my most fun I've had coaching in, in any of the seasons I've had, just because this group is, is really a unique group of kids because they enjoy each other. So when we travel around the road, like I don't have to do team bonding stuff, they do it. You know what I mean? Um, and as a unit, they, they believe in hard work. So you'll have kids coming in 6 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays or kids staying late after practice. Going into final eight, um, I think there, there's a level of excitement there. I do feel very confident again this year, um, but I think our mindset is just excitement to, to finish the job that we've worked so hard for 